How many of you were at camp meeting this last year? The last evening when the men's chorus sang and an altar call was made, there was a young man who stepped out. Stephen, I want you to step out so they can just applaud for you. Little did any of us know that when he stepped out to say, I will give my life to you, Jesus, that there was struggles going on at home. Because dad was a hardcore Christian, but he was not a Seventh-day Adventist. And he was not particularly, I think I'm safe in saying, thrilled about the idea. Stephen went ahead and said, I'm going to be baptized. And he invited his father to be there. So this young man grew up in Lesotho. And I think here I should say it is my fault because I took him to the Seventh-day Adventist school. <laughs> the Seventh-day Adventist school brought up my children. He is the firstborn. The secondborn is the girl next to you, Daddy. Why? Because I thought that and I saw that the Seventh-day Adventist is having a special way of grooming up children to become Amen. Christians. Amen. So I took these children to the Seventh-day Adventist and they told me many things which I could not believe. Some of the things they were saying, what, what, when is the Sabbath day? And I said, hey, it's Sunday. And they were making argument. This one is the great arguer. <laughs> And if you want to make an argument, challenge this man. Because even his teachers at the secondary and the high school, they were saying, why is this young man so argumentative? He asked questions that are beyond our understanding, and yet he's young. Amen. This young man has done wonders for my family, and now is doing wonders for the whole world. I can say the whole world because I'm seeing an international congregation Amen. here. Amen. I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity to be here Amen. to witness his taking faith Amen. from Jesus, Amen. for Jesus. When I first got to Walla Walla, I got a phone call and I was in class and I had no idea who it was so I automatically declined it and thought I'm in class I will get back to you so when I got out of class I called back and on the other line was Mr. Tilly Mr. Ron Tilly and he told me that um, he had some South African men at his house he wanted to introduce me to them. And I thought to myself, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I have class in about an hour and a half, but I didn't say that, of course. But I thought, well, I hope that the Lord will keep me and this is not somebody who's kidnapping me. <laughs> So he came and got me and took me to his house. And that was where I met um, a couple of... Naka. There was Naka. Mm -hmm. Hamilton. There was Hamilton. Percy? Macaulay. 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 No, Molise. Molife. Mm -hmm. Molife and Modise. Yes. There's four. Yeah. We named more, but there's four. <laughs> And when I got in, there was a lot of other people whom at that time I had not known. And I, I wondered what was happening. It was a shock to me. But I sat down and listened to what they had to say. And that was the first time I was introduced to the OMC group. Amen. And I thank Ron Tilly for that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Glad to have you. So other times I would not have Ron Tilly going to practice and so he assigned me to somebody else to a 
transport me to and fro, and his name is Warren Begg. <laughs> Now, with Warren, the first thing he would say to me was, have you not been getting in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> he would ask me that every day when we had a ride, and I would tell him, no, I'm not in trouble. But then a few nights ago, I thought to myself, just before I was thinking of, of this baptism, and Pastor Gary was asking me who might like in the water. Warren was one of the first people who came to my mind because of that question. Have you not been getting in trouble? And when I wondered why, it seemed to me that the question was not just about trouble with people. I had been asking myself, are you not getting in trouble with the Lord? And it's something that was just happening subconsciously. But Warren, I thank you for asking me if I've not been getting in trouble. And then I've asked him to say a word because when I've talked to Stephen, although the faiths have been different, the person who introduced Stephen to Jesus was dead. Old Pop, I love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, because if it had not been for your guidance, I don't think my faith in Jesus would have been this strong. Amen. And I thank you for having raised me up the same way you have. Amen. I would not trade it in for anything. Amen. Thank you. Amen. It is my privilege today, Stephen, and it is the privilege of Warren and Ron and especially of your father to be right behind you and they're all going to have your hands on you when we put you under to now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all worth it for that one guy, but it's so much more than just one guy. And we've got to just keep reaching out and bringing them in so that they can make the connections that are so important. And I'm told that he is studying a little bit and wondering what you joined. Um, but praise the Lord and pray for Stephen and his family. But I just want you to know what a tribute to the men's chorus that travels all the way to South Africa to maybe win a family. Amen to that. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs>